What's up guys? So I guess the most important thing If you're gonna play guitar, tune up, right? It's been so warm here Hey, what's up? Oh, what's that, Knuckles? What's up, dude? So I think I'm in tune, man. How's it going? Yeah. You were first, bro. Now, I've just got to try and share this link so I can view it to you guys as well. You can probably hear my phone going off, right? Let's try this and see if it works. Because it's the first time I've tried to sync up my iPad with my phone as I'm recording. So, so hopefully a couple of you guys have got uh, your guitars going. And I'm going to show you like a three chord blues pattern. Let's turn that off because it's working. I can just hear myself coming back through the iPad. All right, let's have a look. So who's who's here tonight? Bashir, what's up? Fish, what's up? Tim Thorne, what's up, dude? <laughs> He's online. So Tim, I used to play in a band with Tim a long time ago, man. Some rock and roll days. So Tim, you're playing guitar now, huh? Trying to learn some guitar. So I'm going to try and do this as simple as possible because it can be a bit tricky. So I'm just going to do like a three chord blues progression. I'm going to use my fingers for a change. So it's kind of like, like old school Robert Johnson. It's a little bit like uh, Malted Milk, I guess, which was covered by Eric Clapton. So let me show you through the chords, right? So normally this is like, this is an E7, right? But I'm playing it a little bit differently. So it looks like a C shape. Hopefully you can see that. So I've got this C shape thing going on here. And what I'm doing, I'm adding like my pinky on the G string. And what we do, we move that position one, two, three, four frets up. So now my first finger is in the fifth fret, okay, on the B string. So I've still got this C7 shape, right? Now I'm using my fingers, you can use a pick as well. Okay, so there's the first one right there. And I'm just doing a little slide from five, so from four to five. Okay. Then we got this kind of slide into A. This looks like a D shape now. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I've kind of got this D shape thing going on, except instead of the normal D down here, what I've done, I've moved the fingers over a string. So instead of my first finger being on the G string, it's now on the D string, okay? And all my fingers follow. So my first finger's on the D string, my second finger's on the B, and my third finger is there on the G, okay? So I'm, I'm using this shape and I'm bringing it up to the fourth fret, and I'm, then I'm sliding into the fifth, okay? I'm just plucking and watch my lamp there and it smashed my lamp. So I'm plucking just the D, the G and the B string. Okay? You don't smash the lamp. That's probably a bit annoying right there. How's that? 
So back to the beginning, E7. Okay, so we got that going on. I'll go through the rhythm in a, in a bit, yeah? So that's the first that's the first bit going on. So we've basically got E, A, which you're not used to seeing A like that. But it sounds exactly the same, right? So E7 and then A7. So they sound really cool up here. And back to E. So all I'm doing with that E there, I'm going dropping it down one and then bring it back up again okay and the, the strings I'm picking are just the A the D the G and if you can the B as well so let's have a look at this hand over here so it's the E chord I'm changing to the A like turn around which that's actually a B probably not used to seeing a B like that you probably play it down there or something so all I'm doing I'm using the first finger to cover the top three strings and then I'm putting my second finger that's on the fourth fret and my second finger is then going on the fifth fret Okay, so that's your B turnaround. So, you know, if you know how to play a 1 4 5 blues progression, then you'll know the B is where everything turns around and goes back to the beginning. So, the whole thing from the top, right? drop down at the end so all I'm doing there I'm playing the 12th fret on the top E and the D 11 10 9 my third finger stays in that 12th fret finish it off with a B7 so that's kind of rushed but you know, I'll record this and save it so you guys can watch it back and hopefully get something out of it. I was actually doing um, like an online lesson to, I can't remember who it was now, Rain Cloud Ramon, okay? And she asked me if I would do a lesson on this. So I thought, let's try and do a live lesson because she's got the chords down and she just wanted the rhythm. So hopefully now, if you watch this back, and this is based on, like I said, Malted Milk by Robert Johnson. And I know it from Eric Clapton, right? So let's just have a look through here. We've had lots of messages coming in while I've been playing. Elizabeth, hey dude, what's up? Uh, let's have a look. You got some pics, right? Okay. Who else? Ah, oh, so Tim's in work, man. Keep rocking, stay safe, bro. I haven't seen you for ages, man. I've got to come and visit you. Okay, who else have I got? Logan, just got my first electric guitar and I'm learning uh, an acoustic for a month. What should I play and learn? Well, dude, you know, depending on how advanced you are or, you know, I'm guessing you're, you're a noob. So just try some super easy lessons first, like, you know, so maybe some riffs without chords. So I've got like this 10 easy songs uh, without chords. You can you can give that a go, or there's some there's some basic kind of three chord songs in there, 
Uh, the most recent one I think I did was like Bruce Springsteen, perhaps, you know, Born in the USA, which is like two chords. There's loads on there, dude. Just check them out, okay? It depends on your preferences. You know, I do lots of different videos with lots of different styles. So just pick one that suits you. If you get along with it, let me know, you know. I think a popular one, what a lot of people are doing is the Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit. So if you're, you know, if you're a bit more confident with your power chords, then, then try that out, dude, okay? So let's have a look. Um, I can play sound, but I, uh, but I can... I can't play sound, but I can read text. Okay, so that doesn't really help much, does it? Scales, people, I think people are alternate picking, alternate picking. I know people asking me all sorts of questions. Rain Cloud Ramon, what's up? You, you are there. How's it going? So hopefully you'll get something out of this lesson. Uh, have I got an electric guitar? Yes, of course I've got an electric guitar, but it's over in the corner of the room and I'm not, you know, it means I have to plug into the amp and stuff like that. So, uh, Derpy, what's up? Derpy Demon, how's it going? Wildflower. Uh, Derpy Demon Gaming, dude. You should be playing guitar, man, come on. Uh, thanks to you, I've been slowly learning the guitar. Thank you, my pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for hanging out and stuff. So, nice guitar, he's saying. Uh, can I do more pentatonic skills? Uh, well, skills or scales, I mean, there's only five pentatonic scales, which I... So that would be like in the key of E, the easiest one. And you can, you know, you can mess around with that, you can slide it. You can move it around, but the easiest one's probably down here. And starting from the top E string, the, the thin string, to the bottom, you go 3-0, then the B string 3-0, G string 2-0, 2-0 on the D, 2-0 on the A, 3-0 on the bottom E. There's your pentatonic scale. Learn that off by heart, and then you can just work on learning the rest of them. And so on, okay? There's five positions in total. So check them out, okay? I uh, hope that helps. Let's have a look. What else have we got going on? I mean, these comments, I'm probably way behind on the comments, but I'm scrolling through them, guys. So uh, I watched top 10 without chords part one to three. Excellent, fantastic. I've just, I'm just working on part four at the moment, okay? I'm trying to keep it simple because some of them get quite tricky. So static 45A, that's C7 on the fifth. I use that when I play Billy Joel. Yeah, for sure. I mean, lots of different songs. Derpy Demon, yeah, man, of course I remember you. Rain Cloud Ramon is she's she's saying I can play it, I can play it now. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, it's Lego. Hey dude, you're back. So I spoke to you the other night, right? Um let's have a look. Okay. How long have I played for? Well, I've probably played since I'm 40 now, and I've played since I was probably about 12 or 13. So a long time, you do the maths, okay? <laughs> a long time. But you know, I haven't, uh, you know, I wasn't like this hardcore dedicated guitar player. I love to write songs and stuff like that. So for me, it was always about trying to create songs. It wasn't, it wasn't trying to be, you know, all... It wasn't about doing all this crazy stuff. It was about writing something really nice, you know? So yeah, maybe I should have practiced a bit more. Who knows? Um, let's have a look. We've got loads of people. I'm a drummer and I'm trying to play guitar. That's okay. So is Dave Grohl, you know? I mean, check, check him out. He's a great guitar player now. Um, and the, the cool thing about Dave Grohl is when you see him, you know, he does acoustic sets from time to time and he always gets up and says, Hey, my name's Dave and I'm a drummer. And, you know, guitarists find that quite funny. But it's a long story, so. But you'll understand if you're a drummer. You should understand. Um, I feel you, man. Bit difficult. Wow. Okay. 
Thanks, bro. So, yeah, I can uh, I can give you like uh, like a recap on that if you like, and you can like you can slightly change it up a bit. So. change the rhythm around. Anytime you've got like uh, a three chord progression you can really mess with the rhythm. Hopefully you can see the chords now. So all I'm doing with that rhythm a little mute on the end. And of course the pentatonic is going to work beautifully over that. Kind of tricky to do the chords and you know play a bit of lead at the same time, but let's have a look. Do you know any ACDC? Okay, who doesn't know ACDC? If you play the guitar, you must know at least one ACDC song, right? Let's have a look. So who inspired me to play guitar? Who inspired me? I guess when I was really young, Eric Clapton, Mark Knopfler, uh, um, God, John Lee Hooker, um, so many, so many people, dude. And then as I got a bit older, you know, I started getting into the, the Steve Vai's and the Joe Satriani's and... Yeah, so many guitar players, man. Zach Wilde, uh, Diamond, Diamond Daryl, you know, there's so many, there's so many great guitar players out there. So, yeah, I mean, you know, man, it's just whatever was, whatever sounded cool, really. But I guess my, my number one guitar player was when I was a kid was probably Eric Clapton. Uh, these days, I don't know, man, I don't know. There's so many cool, cool guitar players out there. If I see someone on like that guy rocks, you know. So um, I hear that you have to sell your soul to the devil to play real blues. Is that true? Of course, it's true. It's absolutely true. That's why I have no soul. And uh, I think I heard um, talking about Eric Clapton, you know, because he studied the blues and he got to meet all his blues idols and stuff like that, and. Uh, the one thing that he learned was if you really truly want to play the blues, you have to have tragedy in your life. So I think most of us have a little bit of tragedy in our lives. You know, if you don't, then then you're very, very lucky. So I think that kind of helps, you know, uh, as dark as it may sound. But even people like B.B. King used to say, you know, even when I'm down, I play the blues. And when I'm happy, I play the blues. So there's two different types of feel, you know. And what you're talking about is there's there's an old story that Robert Johnson sold his he sold his soul to the devil at the crossroads, right? And it's probably in some lyric somewhere. And I think he was just so so good at guitar. People didn't really believe that you could be that good without you know the devil being involved because you know the blues was the devil music, right? So anyway, yeah. Sally Soul, it's the quick way if you've if you guys have seen Crossroads or anything like that, you know. Um what's what is your favorite guitar or your fave guitar of all time? Well, if you're talking about guitars, it's 
you know, my electric is, is the SG, man. And I actually, when I went out to buy the SG, the one I use in my electric videos, um, I wasn't going to buy an SG. I didn't wake up one morning and go, oh, I want an SG. I actually went down to buy an Ibanez and because I was using the Jackson and stuff and playing metal and I just wanted something a bit different. So I went down and I was, uh, I think I was in like Guildford, which is, you know, uh, south of England. And uh, I went in and I saw this, I tried loads of guitars and I saw this Gibson, this SG and I thought, I'll just try it. You know, I'll just try it. And it didn't play very well. You know, Gibsons don't play particularly well. But the sound, when I plugged that guitar in, it was like, it just had this sound. And I was like, yeah, I need, I need this guitar in my life. And so that was it really. That's how I ended up with an SG. People think I'm like a massive ACDC fan and stuff like that. I'm actually not. Um, I just thought it was a bit different at the time. Everyone was playing like um, Les Paul standards and Fender Telecasters or whatever, or like, crazy metal guitars and I just wanted a, something a little bit different but still a little bit edgy and I guess I kind of like the SG because it was retro and it's a small cut body and it wasn't as heavy as like the Les Pauls I, I actually learned on the Les Paul originally so yeah that's how I ended up with the SG and I guess that's like my workhorse the bitch as as I've called it on stage um, and and it's been with me a long time and uh, yeah, and I play lots of different guitars, but I always go back to the bitch, you know. Um, have I done a video on how to play pumped up kicks? No, I don't think I have, sorry. Um, but I did teach some of my students how to play that, but I'm sure there's tons of, uh, I'm sure there's tons of tutorials on pumped up kicks. It's a super popular song, right? Someone's asking me, can I play Flamenco. Flamenco style, not really. That's about as flamenco as I get. And uh, my friend from uh, Chile, Gustavo, uh, uh, he lives in LA and he would just laugh now at me playing that because he'd be like, Dude, that is not flamenco. He plays flamenco very, very well, and he always laughs at me. <laughs> so um, let's have a look. What we else? What else we got here? What's the first song I learned on guitar? Well, probably one of the first songs I learned. Oh God, what was it? Um, might have been, <clears throat> might have been Faith by George Michael. I couldn't play it very well because I couldn't play bar chords. So I think maybe I played it in E. You know, uh, the key was changed or whatever. But the very first song I played properly, my very first proper song would have been like a watered down version of Hotel California. And I still tell people to learn this song these days because there's so many chords in it and they're they're not super hard chords. They're all open chords and there's just, there's two bar chords in at the end. And then if you get really good, which is the version that I love, you can put the capo on the seventh fret. the 12th fret and it sounds awesome, uh, the 7th fret rather, and it sounds great. And the chords aren't actually that difficult. And I've done a tutorial on, on that as well, so you can check it out. Four different ways of playing Hotel California. So that was um, one, you can probably hear my chair creaking here, it's really annoying. Uh, so that was one of the first songs I have learned to play. That along with... Um, Stairway to Heaven, right? You know, uh, I, I couldn't understand it because when I was a teenager, the, the movie Wayne's World come out and there's a scene in Wayne's World where 
They go into a shop and he wants to try out the Fender Strat and he goes, plays the first bar to Stairway to Heaven and the guy in the shop's like, no dude, and there's a sign up saying no stairway. And it's kind of like, as I guess because everyone used to play Stairway to Heaven and I was just a kid and I was like, you know, I thought it was cool. And it still is cool, in my opinion. It's one of the greatest rock songs ever written. And you must learn it if you're, uh, if you're a noob, okay? So, Justin, uh, Justin Hayes, do you have a particular brand you stick to, i.e. Gibson, Epiphone, Taylor? Well, look, my main guitars are uh, this Taylor, okay, and my Gibson SG, and I've got a couple of backup guitars, and I've got some custom guitars, but really, I'm a total minimalist. Um, some of my friends, they have a ridiculous amount of guitars, and as much as I love like playing 12 strings and, and all different electrics and stuff like that. I have a few issues, whereas, you know, I like to keep things like super simple and I kind of get attached to stuff. So I don't like to, to own too many things, you know, I like to travel light. And so therefore, if I find a tone that I really like, which I eat the Gibson or the Taylor, um, I'd stick to them, you know, and that's the tone I like. Maybe in a couple of years it'll change a bit. But, um, yeah, like a uh, double neck SG, yeah. It's kind of like I've played one. I've played the double neck, but it's, you know, it's like whatever. So, you know, it's not something I'm going to sit down and play every day, you know. And I, I like those, um, I like kind of the flamenco guitar. When I travel sometimes, I take that because it's like really light, it's nylon strings, and it's just easy going. I'm not gonna play anything crazy when I travel. Um, you know, like just holiday or whatever. I mean, if I travel and I'm playing, I'll probably take this because it's electroacoustic. So if I'm gigging, I'll probably do this, you know, if I'm solo gigging. So yeah, and I mean, I ended up with the Taylor because years ago I was teaching I was teaching a kid local and, and they were from Australia and um, the, the I noticed there was a guitar in the room and I said to the father, is this your guitar? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I played the guitar. And I was like, why aren't you teaching your kid? And he's like, because oh, I want him to learn properly. And I was, you know, I was super flattered. And I said, that's a nice guitar, man. And he said, yeah, have a go. And of course, my friend, he worked in a music store and he was always playing Martins and, and he said, you know, borrow my Martin anytime you like to do recording. And I was like, yeah, dude, this guitar was worth thousands. So I was hooked on Martins. And also because I loved like bands like Alice in Chains, it was like, they used to play Guilds. So I absolutely, I, I adored Guilds. I adored that tone. But as soon as I played this Taylor, I was like, wow, this just sounds perfect for what I need. So I went away and I, I tried loads of different tailors and I ended up with this um, 814 CE series because it's kind of so diverse because all the different stuff I play, you know. Might play a bit of jazz or whatever, or you know, you can, you can play metal or whatever you want on it and it's going to sound cool. It's kind of like the Swiss Army knife of guitars, okay? It's pretty diverse. So that's why I ended up with the Taylor, and you know, and I still love it. So yeah, I don't know how I went down off on a tangent there. So, okay, I'm 30 years young and I've never had a guitar lesson. Uh, I bought an Ibanez about 15 years ago and only started to pick it back up. I learned a video a week from you uh, you're a great teacher, dude. Well, uh, man, I'm super chuffed to hear that. And congratulations on picking the guitar up again because 30 years young is n absolutely nothing, dude. You know, you know, when I was 30, it just seems like yesterday. I was actually touring. I was touring with a band when I was 30 and we were like touring France and Belgium and then like North Africa, like Morocco mainly. We played some huge festivals in Morocco. And, uh, and I, I thought, you know, I had like a crisis before I hit 30. I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm getting old, I'm turning 30. And little did I know, you know, I turned 40 last year. <laughs> I went through the same crisis. So believe me, dude, you got like no worries. I mean, and you're, you're starting good because you're teaching yourself, which is fantastic. I, I'll always recommend getting a teacher 
it's always going to increase the speed that you learn. And there's, there's only certain things. It's very, very difficult to teach someone online. And um, there, there are certain things you miss. So you might be making a ton of mistakes and practicing your mistakes and not know about it. Because I did. I'm, I'm completely self-taught. So I've had to, through the years, go back and, and fix those mistakes. And sometimes it's really, really frustrating. You know, and I wish if I could go back and change one thing, I'd go back and get some proper training. And be, I probably didn't get lessons uh, because we couldn't really, I couldn't really afford them when I was a kid. You know, my mother certainly couldn't afford them because uh, I always wanted to play a piano, but we couldn't afford a piano. We lived in a flat, so it was like ridiculous trying to get a, a piano up, upstairs and keyboards back then were super expensive as well. So I ended up with a guitar. And I ended up just teaching myself. So, dude, congratulations on that. Keep it going. And I'm totally flattered that you've learned stuff from my lessons. That's great. That's why I do this stuff, you know, because I didn't have any lessons. So hopefully by sharing the, the little knowledge I have with you guys, you can you can get something out of it. Um, so funny how easy song chord progressions make few folks famous. A static 4-5, man. I'm not sure what you're trying to say about that, but hey. Uh, it's only Jake. Hey, what's up? Uh, could you do shreds? Uh, I think shreds by you mean... <laughs> on the acoustic, I don't know. It doesn't sound that great, I don't think, on the acoustic. Uh, give me the Jackson and, and plug it through my Marshall and then, yeah, I'll give you some shredding, bro. No, no worries. What's your real job <laughs> so believe it or not this is my real job well not this doing live streaming because uh youtube don't pay very much money at all and the money i do earn from youtube i buy pics and i send them around the world to you guys <laughs> which costs quite a lot of money believe it or not um so i'm actually a guitar tutor so i've I've probably got about 30 students and every single day of the week apart from Sunday, so six days a week, I teach and um, I play gigs. I'm a session player and I also write music for like advertising and stuff like that as well. And I've made videos for uh, record labels like Sony Records. I've made videos for them for other artists and I've done photography for Classic Rock Magazine and, and all sorts of stuff like that. But my number one thing is... I'm an artist, you know, I write my own music and produce my own music. And to afford to do that, you know, you have to make a living as well, and this, which is why I teach, okay? So that's kind of my real job. That's what I do, and that's what I've done for over 10 years. And I love it, and it's I don't look at it as a job. It has, you know, it sounds kind of cool, but sometimes it can be really tough, you know? Like in the summer, when you don't have a lot of gigs, you don't have a lot of teaching, because I teach a lot of kids, and... What happens to kids in the summer? You all go on holiday, right? So it can be pretty tricky. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't do anything else. And believe me, I've done like a ton of jobs. I used to work in a bank. I used to like clean cars. I, used to, you know, I worked in a restaurant. I've done tons of jobs, tons and tons of jobs. So, but it's always, music's always been there in the background. So, uh, can I make more videos on music theory? Yeah, I mean, but, you know, that Google is, you know, that's how I learned music theory. And uh, there's nothing you can't learn on Google. And I mean, what, what do you need to know? It's kind of like you can, you can spend your whole life reading about music theory, but unless you put it into practice, it's, it's not going to help you out. So, yeah, it's super important to learn. Personally, you know, I'm a player. Uh, so if I need to learn theory about something, like something in particular, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll pick up on it. If I want to understand what diminished chords are for whatever reason, you know, maybe I'm just intrigued, then yeah, I'll go up and, and work out what diminished chords are or, or whatever, or how to work out any chord name or, you know. But theory comes in very handy when you're like in certain situations and you need to you know, if, especially if you're writing a song and you're like, oh, I got this progression and I can't, you know, I'm stuck for a chord to get out of it. And then, you know, there's a few little tricks you can use, like, um, you know, so if it's all in majors, you can, every major chord has its relative minor. 
So you could, you know, a relative minor, a 99% of the time is going to work, okay? So little th- little bits of theory like that will really help you out. But I wouldn't get too bogged down in it. You know, for me, music's always been about playing. And you ask any uh, musician, and yeah, theory's there, it's in the background, but it's called music theory for a reason. You know, it's not music fact. So, you know, music's about playing, yeah, so don't get too too bogged down in that. But if there's something in particular you don't understand and you want to know, um, sure, I'll do my best to explain it for you. No, no worries. Okay. Um, just followed your thunderstruck tutorial without a pick. My fingers seem to have lost about three inches in length. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen, dude. It's like you know, cheese wire. In fact, here's, a, here's, um, here's something interesting, right? So, on the record, you can hear the pick. When he's playing live on the video, if you watch the video, he holds his hand up and just taps it. So there, no pick. can't hear it because this is acoustic right but on the record you can hear the pick okay so two ways of playing it there you go fun fact of the day uh peter ryan what's up dude how's it going so i've been practicing guitar for a year now uh on an old classical guitar and i don't feel that i'm really getting better anymore what should I do? Well, you need to find a local teacher, okay? If that's not a possibility, then because you might be, it sounds to me like you're stuck in a rut, you're playing the same old stuff. Um, what I do, because sometimes I get stuck in a rut and I just go out and find new inspiration. So I listen to some new music, something I've never heard before. Go out and find inspiration. It doesn't fall on your lap, okay? And, you know, by you're already doing it. You're on YouTube looking at guitarists. You're following uh, lessons and stuff like that. So you, you're on the right track, okay? Don't get frustrated. Uh, one of the fun things I love doing when I get bored of the same old stuff, I use open tunings. So, you, you know, you might use like a, a dadgad tuning. So I did a lesson on that if you want to check it out. So that means instead of um, your guitar being tuned E, a D G B E it'll be tu- tuned D A D G A D okay so you just got to drop down a few and what you'll find is like or open E tuning stuff like that you can use a slide um, you can put the cap on and it sounds really cool well I guess I can show you now right so let me see how quickly I can do this without a tuner there's a drop D there and I want to use an open D tuning so I'm going to drop the top E. Let's drop the the B to an A. Um, Then I need a tune in here you probably can't see. And now I need an F sharp. Um, F sharp. There you go. Open D, that easy, right? Let's put the cap on the fourth fret, just because it's here. Oh, there you go. No hands. do it without a capo if you don't have a capo. How cool is that, yeah? So it doesn't take long. Have a look at some open tuning and, you know, just find some more inspiration, okay, dude? Let's have a look what else we got here. So, uh, DX011, best guitar teacher. Thanks, bro. Really appreciate it. Metallica fan 06. Ironically, can you play Slayer? 
Yes, dude, I did the Slayer intro of Rain in Blood on acoustic guitar. Um, now I'm tuned to D, so... <laughs> I'm not going to do it right now. I don't think it sounds that great on acoustic anyway. But yeah, as I've said before in other lessons, I used to be a massive Slayer fan. I still am a massive Slayer fan. I've seen them God knows how many times. Uh, and they're great and they're full of energy and I'm forever showing my students, check these dudes out. They're old and they still rock, okay? So rock and roll is ageless, guys. Remember that, okay? Uh, Madison Hicks, what's up? Paul Clark, hey, hi Leo, enjoy your vlogs. Yeah, I haven't done many vlogs. I should do another one, eh? But thanks, thank you very much, dude. I appreciate that. It's kind of like, you know, people ask me, well, like a handful of people ask me, and I think, yeah, okay, I'll do it for fun. I'm not, I'm not uh, crazy on vlogging. It's a bit like, hey, look at me. But um, it's not really, it's not really my style. But maybe I'll do some more. What, what I think I was going to do is, um, because you guys like send me a lot of um, requests for songs I haven't necessarily heard, uh, I thought I'm going to do a playback and, and film, film me listening to them and, and what I think. Because I'm always... Looking for new music, right? And everyone, you all know I'm old school, okay? I love 70s rock and I love 90s grunge. And I'm not particularly good with new music because uh, I'm stuck in the past, you know? You like what you like, guys. That's how it is, you know? But I'm always interested in listening to new music. So maybe I'll do a little vlog on that. So if you have any ideas for obscure bands you think I should listen to, then let me know, okay? So, okay, um, can you, uh, this is uh, Zion V, can you um, one day do a tutorial on Can't Stop by Red Hot Chili Peppers? Because I have no clue how the muting works. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I've already done uh, an easy version lesson of that. Uh, I'm not sure if I put the muting in. Let me see if I tune up quickly. <laughs> So if you can see my, my hand here, da da, and I'm just resting my palm down so I'm not going out of my way to mute. Okay, it's kind of hard to hold the guitar up there and play it. But uh, my advice to anyone that's learning, if you're trying to learn something that's a bit above you, then just play it super slow, okay? You can speed it up later, have patience, all right? But check out my video, it's quite old. I can't even remember, you know, if I added muting in or whatever, but check it out, okay? If it's no good, let me know, I'll do another one, okay? So let's have a look what else we got here. Um, which do you, Justin, what's up? Uh, which do you prefer, cutaways or non-cutaways guitar? Well, this is a cutaway. It's a little bit easier to... to do all that, but I've got acoustics over there without cutaways. And the thing about acoustics without cutaways, they have a different tone because there's no tone cut out of the guitar. Every time, some guitars, you know, they've got tuners in the top here and all that. Stay away from those guys, okay? Because anytime you're cutting wood out of the guitar, you're losing tone, okay? So if you get a full-bodied guitar, 
you're going to get a full body tone. So, yeah, all right, you might not be able to reach those higher frets, but if you've got an acoustic guitar, why, you, you know, why do you need to, to hit those high frets anyway? I played a full body guitar, you know, Dreadnought for years without any difficulties. It's just, you know, this guitar is a little bit more dynamic. There's, there's a few more options up here. So, you know, it's, it's horses for courses, man. You know, it's no big deal. Uh, are you from the USA? <laughs> no way, man. I ain't from the USA. That's a terrible American accent. No, I'm from England, dude. Um, tune to D. Tune to D. Nirvana time. I guess what you mean is... That's what you mean, right? Drop D, heart shaped box, because otherwise, all the rest of them are normal tuning, right? Uh, Gara, hey John, what's up? Played Seven Nation Army, really? Dude, come on. Okay, come on, it's an easy one. You you guys know that, right? Um, the other tutorial had crazy muting patterns, but I guess I'll check out your video. Yeah, I mean, don't worry too much about the muting stuff. Look, if you're a beginner, I, I say this to everyone, don't try and do all the technical stuff. Get the basic structure of the track, okay? And then as you progress, you'll, you'll pick it up naturally, all right? When I was learning, like... Stairway to Heaven or whatever when I was a kid. I didn't know, I didn't know the intricate picking patterns. Now I'm out of tune. Um, but I picked them up later, you know? Get the basics and work on them. Build on, on making it sound better, okay? So, it'll come, man. It'll come. Just keep on going. This, this like, live feed is going on. This, this is going on for quite a long time now. So, let's see. Let's push on. So, uh... Just read you're in West Berkshire on your website. I'm in Reading, dude. Yeah. Well, man, hook me up, okay? If you're serious, I don't really, um, even though I'm near Reading, uh, I kind of, I cover like different areas on different days and Reading isn't really one of them. But if you can get to me, then then great. If you can get to me on like a Saturday or something like that, absolutely no problem. But depending where you are, okay, I might be able to get to you because I travel to people's houses. But by all means, shout me up, dude, okay? Uh, just send me an email. You can see my website, okay? Yeah, I'm in West Parks. I'm just near Pangbourne, if you know where that is, okay? Near the train station. So hook me up, bro, okay? If you need some lessons or, you know, if you just need some advice or whatever, just hook me up, all right? Um, can you play the wrong side of heaven? For oh, man, you asked me this the other day. Same person, isn't it? I don't know it. Sorry, dude. I need to go and I have listened to it, right? But I haven't sat down and worked it out, okay? Because I'm not like you guys. I don't cheat and watch YouTube videos. <laughs> That's a complete lie. Of course I watch YouTube videos. Uh, if I don't have time... Um, and someone says, oh, can you teach me how to play, um, I don't know, the Spice Girls or something? I'm like, oh, do I really want to sit down and work out the Spice Girls by ear or should I just have a quick look and see what people are doing? And yeah, it's like three, three chords. So yeah, of course I watch that stuff. But if I'm trying to work out a proper tune, um, I always say to everyone, go to the source, go to the original source, go to the original recording then check out the live versions to see what where their finger positions are on the fretboard, okay? That's the best way to learn a song, guys, because I can't tell you how many tutorials I've watched and they're completely wrong, okay? Or they're close, and you just think, man, those techniques are bad, okay? So, anyway, I'm going off on one again here. you got a, you got a real me in if I do that, okay? How long have you been playing guitar, and what's the hardest thing you're, uh, you're able to play? Dude, uh, so as I said earlier, you probably weren't you weren't around then. Uh, since I was like 12, now I'm 40, a long time. <laughs> and the hardest thing uh, you're able to play, uh, probably um, Eruption by Eddie Van Halen. 
<laughs> but not on the acoustic guitar. Uh, that would take a bit more practice. I don't know. There's tons. There's tons of hard stuff to play. Um, probably the hardest stuff is like jazz stuff because it's like different, intricate, and some people say, "Wow, oh, you listen to jazz," but that's awful. But when you start listening to, I mean, there's good jazz and there's really, really bad jazz. Okay, all the do 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 do. I can't stand all that stuff. All right. But there's some amazing jazz guitar players out there, and uh, I got introduced to like Django Reinhardt years ago by by an old man up the road, Ian Cruikshank. His name was, and he's passed away sadly now. And he was a wonderful, wonderful jazz guitarist. And I had the honor of sitting down with him one day and jamming. And I met him at a gig. He came up to me at a gig, and he was like, "I was playing a Jose Feliciano tune, which I doubt any of you will even know who Jose Feliciano is. If you do, hats off, rock and roll." Uh, but he was an old, uh, he's an old guitarist from the 60s and he's blind. And he did a really cool uh, Doors cover, Light My Fire. And this guy, this old guy came up to me and with Parkinson's and, and he got chatting. And uh, and it turned out he lived close. So we went over and jammed and it was like a sun, sunny day. And yeah, the guy was really cool and I got his record. And he died last year, really sadly. But he was an amazing jazz guitarist and he, he taught me stuff that... Um, I'd never even thought of and it's just stuff you w won't pick up from my tutorial video so you know um, okay so let's have a look uh, I have a cutaway dreadnought uh, it's a little big for me um, yeah you, you'll grow into it don't worry about that that's normal I had a dreadnought when I was a kid and it was way too big for me and you know good folk licks <sighs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. Off the top of my head, uh, McPuffin, um, folk, I don't know what, like Bob Dylan folk or uh, Ben Howard folk? I don't know. Um, let me know, dude. Will you be doing more live streams? If they're popular, yeah, sure, I'll do more live streams. Uh, you know, it's great talking to you guys, you know. Uh, Riff for Smells Like Teen Spirit, definitely. Uh, Replica to Bluosa Cult, Godzilla. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, the Smells Like Teen Spirit is based on, is actually based on More Than a Feeling by Boston. And Kurt Cobain openly admitted that he always wanted to write a song. Um, sorry. That's what he based uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit on. You can hear it, right? You can hear it. It's the same song. Well, the kind of the riffs, the riffs there. You get what I'm saying, right? Uh, okay. Uh, listen to... Uh, oh, okay, make a tutorial. Okay, yeah, thanks. Send me... Uh, we'll send you an email. Okay, dude, do that. Yeah. Can't stop Red Hot Chili Peppers. You know the chords for the chorus. Um... Off the top of my head. No, I can't remember. I can't remember, dude. Um, I can't remember, honestly. Sometimes when people ask me stuff, my mind just goes completely blank. If I sit down and go through the track, I just go, yeah, I remember it. I can't kind of hear it. You have to remember, I play a lot of songs <laughs> on a daily basis and... You know, if they're songs I don't play on, on a regular basis, they just they slip away, part of them slips away, okay? And I have to look them up again. Believe me, there's a lot of stuff up here. Um, but yeah, man, just just Google it, okay? And and if, you, if you're struggling, it's going to, I think they're bar chords, okay? Which is probably why you're struggling, all right? If you struggle, let me know. I'll see if I can find an alternative. I always say just play the power chords if you can't. You know, for example, if... If it was a, a D bar chord, D major bar chord, or D minor bar chord, you know, I'm still out of tune. Just play the first two notes of that chord, and you've got the bar chord, or the fifth chord, the power chord rather, the real name being the fifth chord, and you'll get away with that, no problem. All right? Uh, okay, what else have we got? Play Wonderwall by Oasis. Oh man, what is. You guys are nuts, yeah? Let me just... 
Because I was open tuning earlier. Oh, not bad, not bad. My ear, it's good to know that your ear is still good when you just tune up really quick. There isn't a guitarist out there, dude, that doesn't know that, <laughs> okay? Learn it, all right? It's not difficult. Um, okay, Bob Dylan, Irish folk looking for proper folk riffs. Um, can't find one. Um, nice Boston connection, by the way. Yeah, um, well, I read a lot, dude, so I pick up all this useless information. Um, if you like Bob Dylan, then there's a guy... The reason why Bob Dylan is famous, really, is because of this guy called... I think his name was Dave Van Ronk, Dave Van Ronk, or something like that. And back in the 60s, Bob Dylan used to hang out at Greenwich Village in Manhattan, right? And the in this bar, I don't, I don't know the name of the bar, but it's where all the folk players used to go. And the main guy that used to play there, like the house player, it was this guy called Dave Van Ronk. And he used to do, I can't remember, maybe it was like... I don't know, like a, a California Dreaming type track. It was a really famous track that he used to cover and Bob Dylan heard it and he said to Dave Van Ronk, do you mind if I play that cover, if I if I play it live as well? And Dave Van Ronk was like, no, go for it. And, and this guy, Dave Van Ronk, was kind of like famous on the scene for playing this song. And uh, Bob Dylan went away and, and played it live and there was someone from... Uh, the record label in the audience and they're like man that's amazing you should be signed and because of that they signed him up and I can't remember the record label it was RCA I think or it might be in Colombia that signed him up but he was the first folk player to sign to a major label so check out this guy Dave Van Ronk and he plays some really beautiful stuff and just this whole Travis <laughs> Really nice, simple stuff, okay? So there's no, like, riffs in particular, I know, but, um, you know, I guess just that whole, that whole, like, Mill Travis thing going on. I don't know a hell of a lot of, like, Irish folk. Um, I met Flogging Molly once. I don't know if you know the band Flogging Molly, but I met them once because my friend was touring uh, with a punk band. Uh, I can't, I think they might have been it might have been Blue Ball or something like that. But um, and we ended up playing, supporting these guys, Flogging Molly, and we shared the same dressing room. And they were like, they just blew my mind. And if you don't know who they are, check them out. And they're they're not folk, but their their roots are in Irish folk. And it's kind of crossover punk, ska, and they're crazy. They're absolutely crazy to watch live. So I'm coming up to an hour now, guys. So I'm going to sign off very soon. Um, let's just have a quick whiz through here. Am I in a band? If so, what's it called? I'm not in a band anymore. No, I'm not in a band. I played with lots of bands. And I had like a three-piece trio. That Actually, we never really broke up because we're like best friends. And um, we still play together on a regular basis. And we did a record called Jet From The Sun, which was kind of like, I guess, experimental, like um, progressive kind of heavy rock or whatever you want to call it. But I've played in dirty rock bands. I played in a band just as a singer once called Stone Baby. Um, nothing crazy. I played with a Moroccan band called Lazy Wall. And they're like really popular in Morocco. And they're great friends of mine. And they're still... They're still on the scene, they're still playing and touring and stuff, and we still talk all the time. Uh, yeah, so, you know, no one, no one at the moment, because I go out and I just play, I play my own stuff now, dude. And, you know, I still have a trio, and we go out and gig and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe I'll do some more gigs soon. Who knows? So I've got to start flicking through here now, because we're getting up to an hour. Um... Do I, do I, yeah, hell yeah, I know Floggy Molly. They're great. Yeah, well, check them out live if you haven't seen them live. Um, Marilyn Manson on acoustic. Yeah, I did Sweet Dreams, man, the other day. Um, and Coldplay, no, I don't know any Coldplay songs, dude. Um, 
My girlfriend hates Coldplay, so if I play Coldplay, she would kill me. Um, but I, I've got a lot of time for Chris Martin. I think he's a very talented guy. And um, certainly the first Coldplay album, it is very, very Jeff Buckley. So if you don't know who Jeff Buckley is, you must go and find out who Jeff Buckley is. He wrote, uh, he's dead now, unfortunately. But he wrote uh, an album called Grace. And it is a phenomenal album, and he's a phenomenal musician. It was a phenomenal musician. So check it out. If you like Coldplay, you might like Jeff Buckley. So, okay. Um, uh, learning guitar, you've helped me so much. Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear it. I'm really super chuffed you guys are learning stuff. And uh, I, I only started this channel because uh, it was to help my students out the ones I teach, you know, offline and, um, you know, and I, it was just as a resource for them online. And the fact that you guys get stuff out of it, you know, is fantastic. And, um, and I love the, the lovely, the great feedback you guys give me and it's really, really appreciated. And I, all your support is very much appreciated guys. So thank you very much. Uh, so let's have a look. Um, Bashir, thanks dude. I really appreciate that. Any tips for when you get in a rut with your guitar playing? Yeah, as I was saying earlier, you know, you just got to go try different tunings, go and inspire yourself. Um, sometimes, like, I go out and buy, like, a new pedal or something like that, like um, a new guitar pedal or some new guitar software or something like that that had crazy effects on it, and it would just inspire. It would just, you know, change it up. But most of the time, if I get bored... You know, I, I I experiment with tuning. I used to break strings from time to time, and because I I was too lazy to like change them because I had different guitars. I just used to play all different songs with strings missing, and you come up with some really cool and interesting ideas. But being stuck in a rut, go away and learn some scales or something, and try and play along with some backing tracks completely out of your comfort zone, and that'll soon get you out of the rut, hopefully, and in excuse me, and inspire you to, to go on and learn some different stuff. So, um, yeah, learn some scales, learn like uh, uh, your major modes or something. So I've done a few lessons on the major modes. I'll continue, I'll continue those at some point. So, okay, hope that helps, Mark T. Uh, by the way, your system of down tutorial was brilliant. More metal, more metal. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, what else have we got here? Oh, did I miss you? You missed me playing Wonderwall? What were you doing? Come on, guys. You know this tune already. This tune drives me insane. If people ask me to play it live, rarely do I do it. Well, it depends what kind of mood I am because it is just like really anyway greetings from Spain what's up can you play something from Jimi Hendrix you know you are a sweet little heartbreaker Coldplay, Oasis is for kiddies. Whatever, man. Music's music. It doesn't matter. You know, I, you know, and by the way, I was reading a comment there. It wasn't, that was not my opinion. Um, yeah, I mean, some Oasis songs are very complicated and very cool. So, um, and likewise with Coldplay, I don't know so much Coldplay stuff, but um, Oasis were huge Beatles fans. So if you can, you know, I'm not a giant fan of the Beatles, but when you start learning some Beatles songs, you realize why people like them so much, because they were great songwriters. But I never, you'll rarely, rarely hear me diss any kind of music, because, you know, music's music, guys. It's there to be enjoyed. People like different stuff. Thank goodness people like different stuff. And, um, you know, come on. I, and so I did a tutorial on how to play Happy Birthday. Do I look like the type of guy... <laughs> likes to play happy birthday and stuff like that okay no but i do it to help you guys out because music's music and it's everyone's got to start somewhere so whether in you're into death metal or, or Coldplay, it doesn't really make a difference it's you know music's music 
Anyway, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope you've got something out of this and I've really enjoyed chatting to you guys, even though I probably played for about 10 minutes and that's it. But um, what, uh, what do you think of pop music? I hate it, lol. Well, as you know, pop stands for popular, you know? So, um, for example, um, you know, Free Falling by Tom Petty, I guess was a pop song, but Tom Petty is an amazing artist and wrote some amazing tracks and, you know, so that's cool pop, you know, some, some pop can be cool. But anyway, thanks guys. Really appreciate your uh, feedback and, and you, you hanging out with me here and I'll do this again. I might even do it next week if I'm around. Okay. So uh, keep on keep in touch i uh, love to hear from you don't forget you can you can find me on instagram as well i'll probably give some free pics away tomorrow so hook me up and i'll see you again soon all right good night guys